Um, so to start this demo, I've got some shape files, just of some polygons of the world, basically. So countries, ocean, glaciated areas. Um, so I'm just going to add the shape file reader here and bring these in. So I've got a few that I want to bring in. So I'm going to bring in the coastline, uh, glaciated areas, some, I don't want the lakes actually. I'll just bring in land, ocean, and bring those through into FME. So press OK. And then what I want to do with all of these polygon features is uh, rasterize them. So I'm going to use probably the transformer that seems to come up the most during this webinar, which is the Mapnik rasterizer. So this is a really powerful transformer if you haven't used it before. If you've got a lot of vector features, you can put them into the Mapnik rasterizer. It will turn them into a raster and you can control things like the styling, cell spacing, how big you want that raster to be. Um, so it's pretty handy. So I'm going to add these uh, different feature types to the Mapnik rasterizer in the order that I want them sort of built or rendered as a raster. So I'm going to start with the ocean because we want that at the bottom of the picture. And then you can see for every different feature type that I'm going to send to the Mapnik rasterizer, it creates a new input port for me for the Mapnik rasterizer. So I'll add the land next, then the glaciated areas and the coastline. And just to keep it neat, move that to the bottom. And then inside the Mapnik rasterizer, you can see all of those different features that you're bringing in um, and then how you want to symbolize them. So I know for the top three of these that I'm going to style them as a polygon. So in the drop down list, depending on what you're styling, you can choose the right option. So because I want to make this a beautiful map, I'm going to choose the polygon pattern, which lets me go in here, edit the style. And instead of picking something like maybe sort of dots or things you might see in a typical map, I'm going to use a photo or a picture to be that style. So I've been given some nice watercolor pictures. So because this one is the ocean, I'm going to pick a blue one just to make it look vaguely realistic. And then for the alignment on this one, if I picked local, it means that that polygon pattern would start at um, one point on the feature, whereas I'm going to pick global so that it starts for every feature in the same place. So it looks better, basically. So next I'll do the land in the same way. So I want to set that to polygon pattern. And then for the land, I want a green one because that makes sense and set that to global. And then do the same for the glaciated areas as well. I'm going to set that to a polygon pattern and pick I just pick a random one. I think this has got lots of different colors in. Okay. And then for the coastline, because this is a line, I just want a nice border around all of the countries. I'm going to leave that set to a line symbolizer. And in here, I'm going to leave it as a black line and just set that to be a little bit thicker. So it's a bit more obvious when the map is produced. And then for the size specification, I'm going to pick spacing. And for that, I'm going to use 25,000. So that means for every 25,000 meters, that will be one pixel in the output raster. So press OK. And then because I just want to view this at the moment, I didn't need to write it out. I'm just going to add an inspector to that raster output port and run the workspace. And here we go. So you can see here that this has made a nice map of the world in pretty watercolor pictures.